You recently, first of all, you've just got your UAE residency. So yep. welcome to Dubai officially. Thank you welcome very much. Welcome to the hot Thank city. You. Everything happens. The <laughs> perfect place on earth. Um, congratu congratulations on that. You've recently interviewed the most inter one of the most interesting people on the planet, Elon Musk. Mm. Um, I think you've, you just told me you've released some of the some of it. Yeah, First, I think yeah. by the, by the time this podcast comes out, it should be out and available everywhere. Yeah. It was a Twitter exclusive nice. for the first week, but um, as we record this, I'll be putting it out everywhere else. Awesome. Also. Looking forward to it. I saw some of the clips. It's pretty interesting. How did that come around? How did you know Elon Musk? And what mm. was the idea of that interview? And did anything surprise you about him? Yeah, sure thing. So I noticed that the so I, it, one of the crazy things about the internet mm. is how many people you can just connect with. Yeah, the fact that we've got half of the world's population pretty much now on social media. True, you've got over four billion people actively using social media now, and that's actually going to go up to you know seven, eight, nine billion once the human population reaches that level. And this is a first in human history. And something that's been fascinating that I've really noticed since 2019 as my own star has risen and I've become a lot more popular around the world is I've been amazed by some of the people who know me. Something about social media is however many people you think know who you are, I, it's a multiple of that. So if you've got, say, all across the platforms, you have 10,000 followers, there's a good chance 100,000 people know who you are. If mm. you've got a million followers, there's a good chance 10 million, 20 million people mm. know who you are. Mm. And you might be surprised by who some of those people are, right? So with that said, at the beginning of this year, I just started noticing Elon responding to quite a few of my tweets. Nice. So I'm just putting my tweets out there a few times a day as I normally do. And I keep seeing, you know, Elon popping up with a with an emoji or just replying to what I'm saying or whatever. So I came onto his radar and then I think it was in February, one of my friends, one of my friends messaged me on WhatsApp and was like, Hey, how long has Elon been following you for? And I was like, wait, he follows me? And so I went, <laughs> I went on his profile uh, and I just saw the this is on Twitter. I just saw that it follows you. you. And yeah. I was like, oh wow, I didn't even I didn't even notice when it happens because I turn all my notifications off. Yeah. So I don't even get notifications when when things are going on. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so interesting. And then he started responding to my stuff a lot more. When I activated the subscriptions feature on Twitter, which is just new, he was actually my first subscriber. Awesome. So I've got a few hundred paid subscribers now on Twitter, but he was the very first person. And he just, uh, he actually slid into my DMs first. Okay. So I was talking about some stuff to do with Twitter and certain ideas they could, I was actually making suggestions right. now that he'd bought it on things that they could do right. to make the platform better. I've been on the platform for 14 years. Wow. So I was like, these are things that could be better. Here's things that could be improved. So Elon's like watching it and listening and responding and everything. So I was talking about monetizing creators. I was talking about things to do with video. I nice. was talking about subscriptions, all this kind of stuff. So he DM'd me and was like, yeah, anything, you know, any suggestions you have that can make Twitter better, mm. any problems you see or, you know, errors that are coming up or anything like that, just let me know. Right. So we just started going back and forth. Like we've got a, <laughs> we've got a long, long DM chain. So we we're just going back and forth and, um, that's pretty cool. After a couple of days, I was like, hey, you know, I, I run a podcast. It's called Real Talk with Zuby. I've had it going for a few years. It would be an honor to have you on at some point in the future. I know you're a busy guy. And he just wrote back, sure. This, <laughs> this, is, in, uh, this is maybe in March. Okay. So at the time, I think I was either in the UK or in South Africa. Right. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, when I'm next in the US, I'll reach out and, you know, happy to be flexible, come to you. He's one of the busiest people in the world. So I wasn't trying to lock in a hard date at that point. I'm just yeah. like, okay, cool. He said yes. So I'm going to make that happen. Mm. And then um, a few weeks ago, I was in the US. Again, I was actually in Miami. I had a few events there. Yep. So I DM'd him and was like, hey, I'm in Florida now. Um, you know, can we line this up for the next couple of weeks? He's traveling. It, 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 it was hard to lock. It was hard to like lock down a time. So it, it was a yes but when Whatever. it's possible, when it's feasible. Yeah. So yeah. I actually went out to California. I thought I was going to do the interview a week before I ended up doing it mm. because uh, he ended up having to travel and spend more time abroad than intended. So we had to push it back a week. So I actually went back to Miami. Then I flew back out to San Francisco, got invited to Twitter headquarters, got the guys to set up all the cameras and How the lights and everything. How was going to Twitter? It, it was funny. It was actually interesting. I mean, first of all, I, like I don't, I don't, I don't say this on any ideological level, but San Francisco is a mess. Yeah, bro. We'll, Have we'll you been get there? To that. Oh, 
Okay. Times. Yeah. The, the city's a mess. City's and a mess. where Twitter headquarters is, it's, it's downtown. I hadn't been to the city and actually walked around it since 2019. So mm. I was curious to see, okay, I've got a picture in, in my head of the city. Mm. Is it better? Is it worse? Is it the same? And um, it, it was the same at best, mm. but uh, it, it's, it's a dead zone. It's really, it's it really a bad place. And people always think I'm exaggerating and I'm like, man, you have to go there. No, I've got videos Walk on the my streets phone. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So... The, I've got, uh, I saw once when I was walking to, yeah, yeah, downtown San Francisco and San Diego downtown was supposed to be the best place. Mm. And I was walking past like 12 in the afternoon for lunch to meet a friend. There was a dude laying there shaking yeah. with seizures. And yeah. there's homeless shelter, houses yeah. everywhere, the tents. I was like, what the no, not, not shelter, just tents. Yeah, tents. Yeah. And I've seen it before, but once you stay in Dubai for a while and then mm -hmm. you go there, suddenly it's like a shock. What the Open hell is Open air drug happening? use, people just shooting up heroin, Needles, people doing fentanyl. Like I... I yeah, I, I, I just, you see it all there. You see it all there, and it's it's bizarre because this is not one. This is not just one of the most expensive cities in the U.S. It's one of the most expensive cities in the world. Yeah, this is the home of Silicon Valley. This is the home of a lot of these giant tech companies and so much. You know, San Francisco. If you say it to most people who haven't been there, it has the prestige in the way that Los Angeles and New yes. York and Paris and London have this prestige, which maybe maybe is from like the sort of. 2000s period and earlier yeah, yeah. when these were really some of the you know the best cities in the country sorry yeah. best cities in the world to live in and unfortunately so many of them have just declined over the years in all these ways you know not even becoming safe anymore in many aspects and in many areas so that's sad but coming back to the interview so i i got to twitter hq around 6 30 p.m we were supposed to start the podcast at nine Sorry, we're supposed to start at eight. Okay. Busy guy, kept getting pushed back. He was having meetings and everything. So we didn't actually start recording. But that's the first time you met him, right? First time meeting him. Awesome. Okay. First time meeting him in person. Um, eventually, you know, he came in around nine o'clock. So that was, uh, that was because we, we'd just been waiting in a, in a studio like this, just kind of sitting there waiting. That looked like the lobby of Twitter. Was it the lobby? It was or? the cafe. Cafe. Okay. The, yeah, the cafe of their office. So we, we're, we're just, you know, I'm just waiting with the, the video and, and camera people right, who are right. doing the recording and we're just chatting. And then, you know, the man himself comes in. He's tall. He's a big dude. He's bigger than, uh, than uh, I, I think I knew he was tall, but he's like bigger than I, I, I thought. Yeah, okay. Um, but he was super friendly. There wasn't a big gap between us, him coming in and us starting the podcast. Okay. Because it was already after 9 p.m., He'd had a long, busy day. He'd flown in from Texas. I didn't want to delay too long. So mm. we just exchanged some pleasantries. And then we sat down like this. And cool. yeah, just uh, that's any, anyone go go listen to the interview. And that's just, that's just it how it went. When is launching again? It's out. It's already out. The full version is out. Yeah, it's okay, available. Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but yeah, he was very kind. He was humble. He was polite. You know, whenever I meet famous people or whatever, I'm always, oh, what, what, what's he like in real life? What's this person like? What's Joe Rogan like? What's Ben Shapiro like? What's Elon Musk like? Whatever. Um, and he was cool. He was humble. He was friendly. He was, he was very happy to meet me as well, which was nice because we'd interacted so much online and he's been following me. And one thing about Twitter specifically mm. is when you follow people, you really do kind of get to know them. That's true. Because on Instagram, Instagram's like a highlight reel, uh, YouTube can also be a bit of a highlight reel unless someone is really showing the behind the scenes stuff. Twitter, you sort of see the real side of people because it brings out, in some cases, the worst aspects of people. But mm. you can, because it's text based and not just photo based, people are sharing their thoughts. Yeah. So if you follow someone for a while, you can understand their sense of humor, the way they see the world, their views and ideology on certain things. You can see how they interact with others. So you have this sense of knowing the person in a way that you don't mm. on other social media. So it was, it was, so he was happy to, you know, he's, he's like a fan of what I do and awesome. obviously shares some of my values. So it was dope, man. And it, it was a massive honor. Cause I mean, you know, five, six years ago, I was still selling my CDs on the street and in shopping malls in the UK. Right. Mm. So from 2011 until 2019, mm. till January 2019, um, you know, for the first eight years of that, I was just out there. No, not eight years. Let me get that right. From 2011 to 2015 or so, I was earning all my income just hustling my CDs on the street. That's crazy. Right? Traveling all over the UK, selling my CDs on the street, doing small gigs all over the place, organizing my own tours 
all of that and selling a little bit of merchandise. 2014 to early 2019, I graduated from the street and was doing it in shopping centers. So traveling all over the UK, from Bournemouth to Glasgow, from Norwich to Cardiff, just out there, shopping centers, on the street, doing shows, just really grinding. I sold tens of thousands of albums hand to hand crazy. before 99% of people who now know me um, knew who I was. Mm. So there's a massive backstory here. So to go from that, to go from standing at my pop-up shop in January 29, 2019 with across all the social media platforms combined, at that time I had 50,000 followers. Keep in mind, this is after more than a decade of grinding. Mm. Um, to sitting down with one of the you know the greatest entrepreneur, influential man, too, and one of the most influential yeah. people and the richest man yeah. in the entire world. And he knows who I am. And it's he's crazy. like Elon doesn't go on every podcast. Like the fact that he's even like, yeah, I want to go on you. I'll go on yours, right? Like yeah. that's a that's a massive deal. So with all the things I'm doing, sometimes it can seem a little bit crazy and disconnected and weird. And I know what my North Star goal is, which is what I said earlier on in this podcast. Mm. But sometimes I get this thing where I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. There's not a clear- I know what you mean. There's, there's not a clear b blueprint to it. Yeah. But then I also get the verification and validation of like, okay, this is a little bit random and you're breaking some very new ground here in these different areas and the combination of what I'm doing. But these, these, these are clear signs that whatever you're doing, you're on the right path. Hmm. You, see, you see what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, how did I even, I'm sitting there kind of, how did I end up sitting here with Elon Musk and we're just chatting well, and joking Is that what you were thinking in your head? While you... Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> like, like, I, I've had a lot of surreal moments over the years. Yeah. I mean, I've been invited to the White House three times. I've been invited to the Pentagon. Like I'm not even from America. Yeah. I'm from the UK. I'm, a, I'm an independent rapper from the South of England. Yeah. And I'm, I'm there in the White House and people are like, oh, Zuby, yeah. Is that, yeah, you're Zuby. I'm being recognized in the White House, <laughs> right? I've got, I have, right? I have followers, by the way, this was under the Trump administration, but I've got followers in the White House who like see me walk by and are like, oh yeah, I know who that is. And I'm just like, how is this happening? Or I'm sitting down with this person or with that person. I'm with, man, anywhere, all these, all the Daily Wire guy, Tucker Carlson, you know, like whatever. I'm Again, I'm not even, I'm not even from, yeah. This nation, I, I can be traveling around. I'm now in Dubai. Yeah. Uh, this is I've been to ten cities. Sorry, ten countries this year so far. Mm. We're only halfway through the year, but you know I've been to South Africa, Nigeria, UAE, Qatar, UK, USA, Mexico, uh, Italy, like all these different places, often for events. Yeah. And I'm like, how am I? You're almost standing there, and I'm like, man, like, how do how do these people even know who I am? That's the crazy thing about the social media, right? You see numbers, yeah. but it's a different thing to be in. I went to Australia in October last year. First time I'd ever been there. Yeah. Never set foot in the country, 10,000 miles away from home. And people come to see you speak. Or I organize a meetup in Sydney and like 50 something people show up. Yeah. And, are like, you, and, and I'm just like, that is, that's, that's, to me, that's the best thing. I'm, I'm completely people driven. I'm completely people driven. Before we started the podcast, you were asking like about what drives me. I'm absolutely people driven. So the fact that I can go to any city in the world at this point mm. and bring people together and everyone gets on well and everyone's cool and it's a genuinely diverse crowd, but what people have in common is in the mind and it's in the heart. Right. These are all people who, who are critical thinkers and who have a, they want to, they want to be better. Yep. That's what my audience generally has in common. These are people who they want to know the truth and they want to self-improve in some way, shape or form, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. They're trying, these are people who are trying to get better. There's mm. a lot of people out there who are not trying to get better. They're mm. just stagnant. They're even resentful of people who want to get better and they're trying to pull each other down or whatever. Amongst my audience in general, it's not like that, mm. right? I set, my, I set a certain example and have a certain message. But then it means when you, I do something like a meetup, it doesn't matter if it's in LA or if it's in Dubai or if it's in London, those people, regardless of their age, regardless of their religion, political stripes, skin colors, whatever, man, woman, everyone just comes together and we have great conversations. Everyone is cool. Like there's no, there's never been any security issues or anything. Like all these people just come together and it's amazing, man. It's amazing. I love it. 